Welcome to our virtual training. My name is Kelsey Kneebone, and I'm the event supervisor this year for the session Bridging the Gap. In the chat, I just sent a link to the Macomb Science Olympiad website. Uh, at this website, uh, for the competition, you're able to see all of the information related to Bridging the Gap. Uh, this includes rules, this includes an FAQ section, uh, everything on there, uh, including past questions maybe that you have later on, you can find on this website. This is the rules that are there. It's on the uh, download current rules section, so pretty straightforward. We'll talk through this so that everyone's on the, the same page. These are the official rules, so anything you read anywhere else, maybe somebody in the past, et cetera, always resort to this document specifically. Some of you might be new to Bridging the Gap. So overall, just a brief explanation. Bridging the Gap is when students have a goal of building a bridge to support the weight of a tennis ball. They're given 20 minutes to do this. Uh, initially, they'll start with a variety of materials it could be paper tape straw strings could be marshmallows and spaghetti right it could be basically anything uh that either you've seen in the science olympiad kit or even outside of that so don't let the students get too used to using the same materials over and over the teams can use anything in the package including the package itself so uh sometimes it'll come in a grocery bag or a paper bag etc and you want to encourage them to use everything they're given. Uh, I recommend that you initially start out with the student inventorying their materials and making sure that if anything was broken uh, or they don't have the right quantity, we have supplemental components. And if they do it before the competition starts and before they start building, we know that obviously it was broken when they are missing when they started. So there will be a list in that competition room that all the students can see and making uh, they'll be able to double check that their kit is complete. Uh, once they start building or altering material, obviously they can't replace it. Additionally, each uh, team is given two boxes in their build area for practicing with their bridge and making tests and uh, being able to edit and go back and forth those boxes they can't use for building. So they have to keep them as they are so that the next team can use them. They don't have to use all of the materials. Sometimes items won't be useful for their vision and that is absolutely okay. And their goal is to construct a bridge that spans the greatest possible distance. So we do this by testing on a platform. This is a very grainy picture, my apologies, of what the platform looks like. Uh, the supports are about 12 inches by 12 inches, which is very similar to the box that they're given to practice with. And it is about three feet off the ground. So the tennis ball can hang below the bridge or be above the bridge. Uh, it's not required to be at the highest point. Um, when we evaluate the bridge, the students will place the tennis ball at the center, um, roughly at a right angle to the bridge. So the bridge has to support that tennis ball and for a minimum of five seconds. So the uh, that'll be placed by the student, timed by us, and considered a success if it lasts for five seconds. There is not a penalty if a piece falls off or uh, anything of that nature, but there is a becomes a problem, obviously, if the bridge is supported by anything besides the two platform pieces. I have oh my my graphic. Where can the tennis ball be? This is something that I feel like a lot of people start to question. Obviously, it can sit in the center in the middle. That's pretty standard in terms of of student ideas. Sometimes though, make little baskets. It can sit below it, that's fine. It can sit above it in a box or a basket. Uh, those are all acceptable. Obviously placing the ball over near a support, right? The bridge isn't actually supporting it. The support is supporting it. Uh, nothing can be touching the ground. 
so that's that's what this graphic is demonstrating and similarly if they build a basket over the support again it's not it needs to be in the center so so far what can your students bring with them this is a we do not supply these materials so rulers scissors pliers things if they want to manipulate the material they need to bring with them they can also bring uh, pencils and papers if they want to write, but they cannot use any of those materials to uh, build their bridge, right? They, it would be unfair for someone to bring in paper and try and use that on their bridge. Um, we don't allow potentially harmful items. So obviously these are young, young children. Um, be smart about what you give them as they're walking into a room with many other young children. Uh, pretty self-explanatory we'll make sure to check their items as they come into the event. All right. Do we have any questions before we jump into what some of the example bridges have looked like? Any questions about like the competition half? Okay. So these are some examples from a workshop that was done in 2019. Uh, they're not the prettiest pictures. I'll just give you a forewarning, but they are actual examples of what students designed themselves. So here they were given uh, paper bags, straws, uh, tape, things like that. These students built across the boxes. These are the same boxes that our students will be using um, to practice their bridge. So some of these you can see they, they went and used the, the paper to create a platform um, these are just a couple that spanned across and connected in, in the middle. These are uh, a wide base per se. Maybe that's what you would see is different between this and a previous. Um, this is same, but they're testing it with a piece of wood instead of a tennis ball. So uh, when we talk about what the uh, this this looks like when they're in the room. Uh, each team's going to have a timer so they know how much time that they will have last left. They'll have a test tennis ball so that they can practice placing it on their bridge in their their build area, and they'll have the the test structure. So they can use all of the twenty minutes. They can use five minutes. It's really what they end up using at all. Uh, once they finish, they'll support, uh, excuse me, they'll contact either myself or another volunteer in the room. There's usually five to six people in that room volunteering, so there's a lot of people there. Uh, they can then get their bridge tested, so they'll move the supports, tell us where they want them, place their tennis ball, and do the test. It is important, I want to stress, that your students have a, a functioning bridge over a bridge that uh, is super long and doesn't work. So a six inch bridge that works in comparison to a three foot bridge that doesn't work, the six inch bridge is worth more points overall. So the fact that it can support the tennis ball for five minutes will be more important for that team. Um, we do measure the distance between the pedestals, uh, not the overall length of the bridge itself. So if the bridge has to overlap both pedestals by 12 inches to support, those that additional two feet is not counted in their, uh, their overall length. We weigh the bridges for tiebreakers. Um, technically, the, from there, the lightest bridge wins. It's very rare that it comes down to that. Uh, there's, there's usually a big enough difference in between the bridges. Other information. It's an official tennis ball. Uh, so about six and a half centimeters with a weight of about 58 grams. Um, so if you wanna make sure that that's exactly what you want. Um, and lastly, there'll be in the room itself, we set up small little cubby areas for each team to work with. So obviously tell the teams to try and keep their eyes on their own projects and, and all of that. We do our best to, to keep them from looking at each other, but uh, there's only so much you can do in, in spaces like that. All right. 
that's the a lot of information really fast. Um, I want to open up the floor. Erin? Yes. Question. Hello. Uh, I'm wondering, so in one of the pictures, it looked like one of the bridges was taped to the supports. That is not allowed. Correct. That is not allowed. That is okay. not allowed. Your bridge has to be supported. It can't be if you say like a suspension bridge where you would hold it down on the support. It needs to be free standing by its own. Um, in addition, thank you, uh, the bridge cannot extend past the end of the support. Okay. So both sides here, it needs to end before, I don't know if you can see my mouse, needs to end before the end of the platform piece. Yeah, so they can't hook it around the edges. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, next question, when they call you over to do the test, it's only one time, either it works or it doesn't, Correct. or, okay. And they're allowed to test in their area as many times as they can in their 20 minutes in their build. It's just okay. the final test, uh, the official test that they do will be uh, a one-time event. Uh, Tony, I think I see your hand up. Uh, yep, two questions. Um, first of all, what's the, uh, and maybe I missed it, but what's the size of the platforms on the support device? They're 12 by 12. Okay. And then, um, so when they're, but when the kids are testing the um, bridge in their own area, rather than this device, they're just going to be putting it on those boxes? Correct. Okay, thank you. No problem. Will yes. the supports be brought to them? No, they will bring their they, bridge out to a, a separate area. Um, there's no other teams there. So we do all of that a single team at a time for their final testing. But be careful moving it. Yes. <laughs> they are Where's very... The coach? Very gentle. The coach is not allowed in the room during this event. You send one or two students in and they do the entire thing by themselves. Okay. Good question. Thank you. I remember we won't get to see them do it. So do you have recommendations for these practice sessions? You know, what are, you know, if we're getting the kids together and we're having them practice, we have the supplies from the school, so do you have any recommendations for their builds and their practice times? This is the first time I've done sure. it. Sure, no, absolutely. <laughs> uh, generally, try and give them between five to 15 different types of material, um, reminding them that depending on the materials they get, it could be all of the bridges are going to end up being very short or all of the bridges could be very long. Uh, if they get in a mindset that all of my bridges are always, you know, 32 inches or something, right? Like you, you don't want them to have that, that mindset that you want to teach that flexibility, um, teaching them that they can use everything or just parts. There are some videos online of maybe like science programs who build bridges in their classrooms that they can help as well. Uh, here, you know what I'll do. There was a there's a sample list on the website, but I'll also put it in the chat here of what the 2016 materials were. So you can kind of get a maybe just a little jumping off point. I don't know how that's going to copy and paste. Hopefully that went well. Um, this was all of these materials can be found in the bridging the gap box the Science Olympiad, Macomb Science Olympiad has, uh, as well as many other materials. So really, there will always be, when I, when I do the competition, I guess I should phrase it that way, because if somebody else comes in next year and says, you know, whatever, I try to make sure there is always a, like a, a sturdy material, right? Whether it be skewers or popsicle sticks or straws, uh, something that they can build some sort of foundation off of. Um, and then some sort of connecting material, uh, tape or pipe cleaners or 
uh, string, something that they can use to take the structural material and make it uh, function across multiple pieces. And then from there, the things like paper or the bag or um, any material that can create a spance, right? Those are all pieces. You, you really want to have one of each of those three materials when they're doing these practice runs. There are things that show up, like you can see on the list, uh, the previous competition director used forks. He mentioned to me that that, that didn't go very well. Nobody used the forks. <laughs> so uh, it it's just where they're at in their headspace that day when they walk in for their 20 minutes. I do see a hand up, but I can't. Let me see, let me jump over. Kristen. Um, yeah, I just wanted to clarify, are the coaches not allowed in while the kids are practicing or are they just not allowed in for the final test? The coaches are not allowed in for the entirety of this competition. We put black okay. trash bags up on the windows so that no one can see the materials beforehand. And it's it's very much a like a mystery, fun competition for the kids. Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. Hey guys, this is Manish with uh, Macomb Science Olympiad. A uh, couple things. One thing that has worked for me, uh, being a head coach a long time ago, is uh, throw a whole bunch of different material at kids. And when they are done building it, you know, help them, how could they extend it, right? I mean, if you have a piece of paper, you can roll it and use just a little bit of tape on it. And that is gonna make a really, really strong structure, right? So whole bunch of different materials and uh, practice, practice, practice. Almost mm -hmm. all of our events are uh, no coaching allowed. Once they come in for the tournament, no coaching allowed. Some of them are closed doors, but even the sessions that are open, like uh, you, depending on where this is, I think we do allow you to watch from certain distance in events like simple machines, water bottle rocket, ping pong parachute, or ping pong propulsion. Uh, you are allowed to watch, no problem, but you cannot coach. So when kids come in, they are the ones running it. Last year for this competition, there were your coaches were able to see through a window while we were doing the final test, but they weren't able to see any of the build process. Um, so it was it was almost a surprise for the coaches to see what the teams had built while they were doing their their final test. I don't know if we'll be in the same room this year, or the same space, right? Obviously things change. Um, that was just what it was in a previous year. I think uh, we are going, well, we plan to be at Macomb Community College, which is much bigger than what we hosted last year. Last year was our first year that we had to switch because Macomb was not open for us. Uh, but this year, the plan is to be back at Macomb South Campus. And it's a big campus. Thank you, Manesh, for, for adding that information. Do we have any other questions, comments, concerns? Uh, okay, so like Manesh said at the beginning, this will be available on YouTube in a couple days once it's complete. Uh, if you feel inclined to, to re-see this, there's a very similar presentation that was given last year for the coaches uh the the coaches workshop so you can check out that one um it obviously won't have the same questions as here i do see in the chat from tom do two student teams have the same amount of time as a one person team yes all teams have 20 or um have that that build time so oh 
Okay. Excellent. Um, I, Manesh, do you know if there will be a question box on the Science Olympiad website? Is that something we're continuing to do? You're on mute, my friend. I was on mute. Uh, <clears throat> if you have any questions, you need a rule clarification on the Macomb SO Elementary website. Uh, there is a section called FAQs, and I would actually encourage you guys to check that from time to time because sometimes somebody has asked a question that may change your interpretation or may help you build better. Uh, so you can ask the questions. Basically, when you ask the question, the website sends a couple of us who are administrators behind the scene an email, and the question goes to Kelsey. Kelsey answers the question, which comes back to the administrator, and then we post that question and an answer out there. Some of the older questions that may pertain uh, that we think is helpful are left out there in the FAQ system. I'm not 100% sure if it's up and running or not, but it should be up and running by Monday. Okay, awesome. Yep. Um, thank Somebody you. Somebody else had a question. Yeah, I see. Richard, does it seem that one person teams have a disadvantage? I think that there are pros and cons to one person teams and two person teams, right? Uh, as a one person team, they can do the design work in their their own space. They don't have to discuss back and forth with another team so they can kind of get running without having to do any explanations. So they get a little bit of time back there. Uh, but with the uh, two student teams, obviously they need to work together. They're doing a lot of work together. Um, and due to the time limit, two student teams will have some advantage. It It is inevitable. I guess the, the best thing I could say is if you're concerned that a one-person team, if you're a one-person team, um, maybe try and get to a two-person team if you can. Uh, and I think that from my, my anecdotal experience, um, there wasn't a big difference that I saw. I didn't see a high percentage of failure among one-person teams versus two-person teams. Uh, in previous years that I've been a coach. So the rules say 30 minutes approximately. Do students have that 10 minutes to check materials and the judges say start now? The students get 30 minutes approximately includes the check time of the bridge, right? Making sure that uh, doing the final evaluation, uh, weighing the bridge, et cetera. So when we're saying 30 minutes, we're saying plan on your students being in this, this space for 30 minutes. The students do not have 10 minutes of check time. They have the 20 minutes, they're given the materials, they get to check the materials. It's not gonna be so many that it takes 10 minutes. Um, like you saw on the list above, they need to count to four or six, maybe seven times. Um, and I, put the materials together myself. I'm not perfect, obviously. Uh, last year, I didn't have anybody come up and say that they were missing anything. So uh, I'd like to think that, knock on wood, I, I did okay with that. Um, and so they get a 20 minute, we give them like a kitchen timer actually at their station. When they sit down, we say, here are your materials. Is there anything you need? Your time starts now. And they get that 20 minutes. It's very rare uh, in my experience that they use nine minutes and 59 seconds, right? A lot of teams are at like maybe the 12 to 15 minute mark. They're like, you know what? I'm good. I like what I have. And they come test it out. So I'm not, I, I don't think that they really lose anything from this uh, checking their materials during their build time. Thanks for the question. We do stagger starts too. So you, I believe, Manesh, the teams are all given a specific start time for them to show up and walk in the doors as well. So that's correct. Thank you. Uh, 
I got a uh, quick question if I could ask is um, sure. um, the um, different events that go on through the day. Uh, when I've done this in the past, there was uh, there was a couple times where like events overlapped a little bit and the students had to be out of one because they got to the other one. Uh, is that something that to avoid or at happening? So the question is, do we try and schedule the teams, um, obviously, when other parts of their team aren't compete competing? Right, um, yeah, they might be in like a different event, mm -hmm. like they're doing grass to graph or something like that. They're sure. off somewhere else in the campus. I actually don't know the answer to that question. Manesh, so generally know? speaking, generally speaking, there is at least uh, 10 minutes between the two events. Uh, I would I if I was coaching and if if I had a couple kids who had back to back event, I made sure that everybody understood had a chance to visit the campus because this puts a lot of frustration on kids because they are running short. We don't know which direction the next building is. So I think our preparations, us as a coach, parents, helps a lot. And generally speaking, we are on time. So that 10 minutes is plenty of time for you to get from point A to point B. I know it's tight in some cases, especially if you, let's say you are in the rack building, the gym area for an event, and then you have a event all the way in B building or C building. It's a little bit of walk, but we have done a lot of due diligence and we have made sure that that 10 minutes is plenty of time. Thanks, Manesh. Yep. Does that answer your question? Oh, here. Are the event times already identified? I don't have that answer. I don't believe so. I think that that's something that's still in, in process. So be on the lookout, I guess, for that information. Perfect. Thank you. Yes, it did uh, answer my question. Thank you. Appreciate it. Excellent. The, the schedule, will, schedule will be out shortly, so you can look at it. I believe a draft schedule is already out there, so you would know, for an example, let's say right now, uh me and kelsey are doing this event and i believe john ogden is doing charged up so that schedule is already out so when you are assigning kids the events if you cannot assign a same kid into simple machines and charged up because those two events are running simultaneous and that information is already out there and has been well communicated to the head coaches. So the head coaches should be the ones building the team and they should be sure that they they didn't assign same person in both these events. On the Macomb Science Olympiad page, there is a 2022 tournament tab. Uh, that does list events that have a uh, common conflict and then has the uh, preliminary time schedule there as well. Yeah, I'll absolutely ask everybody to use that website. There is a ton of information. There are, like I was saying earlier, some of you were not here uh, as we joined five, 10 minutes early. Uh, there's a whole bunch of pictures that people take uh you know we have a couple photographers who come and take the pictures and they are out there there are some event pictures uh that you can get some ideas from so if you go to the website there is a lot of stuff there are some videos that we made in past like for charged up there is a detailed video for what about a rocket i think i did i'm pretty sure i did that video that's out there and if you follow those informations i mean there is no reason why you can succeed. It's very detailed. I reshared the link to the website in the chat. Um, it is 1030, which I believe is our stop time, and I don't want to hold over anybody who needs to jump to a different 
discussion. So like Manish said earlier, use the question system on our website, the link that's right there, uh, to if you have any lingering questions, but always again, check the rules. They might be there already and addressed. So thank you all so much for your time. I hope you have a good rest.